Hey guys, today we're going to talk about how to make your top for your box. So what we should have at this point is a leftover piece of our board, which should be somewhere around 34 inches long. So we're going to end up cutting this into two 17s, so we'll get two equal pieces out of this. Now if yours is a little bit less than 34, I just want you to cut it directly in half. So that, that size is going to be determined by your box and how it kind of finished up. So. Uh, your board should be about 34, cut it directly in half, okay? We'll do that now. All right, so now we have our two halves. Now let's go to the jointer. So we do not want to plane these. If you've already planed them, we can probably still make this work, but your top is going to be thinner than what we want it to be. So let's go to the joiner and joint our best edge. So we have our jointed edge now, marked with an X. The next step is to go over to the table saw. Let's figure out how wide we need to cut these on the table saw. Okay, so we need to figure out how wide we're gonna cut each of these boards so that when we glue them together, they are the right size for our box. Now we do wanna leave a little bit extra room because we want our top to overhang the box. It's a good chance our box is not going to be perfectly square on all four corners all the way around. So if that's the case, then we wanna make sure that when we square our panel for our top, that we have an overlap on the outside all the way around. When we're finished gluing our top on, we will use a flush trim router bit to trim that all the way around to match your box perfectly. So how are we gonna do that? Well, you've already glued together your box, okay? So this is the top view of our box. I need you to measure the width of the box on both sides. If your box is not square, then that means that one of these is going to be bigger than the other. So let's just use uh, a few numbers for example. Let's say that this one is seven and 15 sixteenths and this one is eight, all right? So that side is bigger. Then we're gonna do the same thing for the length of the box. We're gonna measure both sides for our length. And again, for the same reason, good chance the box is out of square, so it's gonna be longer on one side than the other. So let's say that we have 15 and seven eighths here, and here we have 16, okay? Now, I'm going to take these numbers and write those down, but I'm only gonna write down the numbers that are the bigger numbers. So my box size is going to be, look at my width, eight's bigger, so I'm gonna put eight. When I look at my lengths, my 16 is bigger, so I put my 16 here, okay? So that's my box size. Now so now we need to figure out our top size. The way we're gonna do that is we're gonna add 1 8 of an inch to both the width and the length, and that's gonna give us our overhang all the way around the box. So add an eighth to an eight inch. This is for our top size. Add an eighth of an inch to eight, it gives us eight and 1 8. And we add an eighth to our 16 to give us 16 and 1 8. Okay, so that is our top size. Now we need to figure out, we still aren't sure how wide we need to cut these boards. Okay, so if we are going to make a panel, we are going to glue two boards together. Okay, 
Okay, so we're going to glue these two boards together. We know that it has to be 8 and 1 eighth, but we don't know how big each of these is going to be. So how do we figure that out? We just cut this in half or divide by 2. So 8 and 1 eighth divided by 2 gives us 4 and 1 16th. So each board is going to be 4 and 1 16th. So when we put two and four, two boards that are four and one sixteenth together, we'll get our eight and one eighth, which will give us that overhang. Okay, so now we know how wide to cut these boards. So let's go to the table saw and make some rip cuts. So at this point, I like to, since we're using the table saw, I want to reiterate just a couple things as we use this machine. Uh, I've seen a lot of people at this stage putting their board down and then reaching over and turning the machine on. We don't want to ever lose control of the board. So we're going to have the board in the hand and reach down and turn the machine on, and then we're going to get ourselves in the position we need to be in. Okay, to do this glue up, we're going to go ahead and work over here at this glue up table. Now this is specifically made for small panels. If you're making a larger panel than this, you can just lay your clamps out on a normal work table. And you wouldn't want to use this because you're limited in how wide your panel can be. But for our box, we can use this table and it works out really well. So some of the things you're going to need, you're going to need two of these bar clamps. You want to find the shortest ones possible because our panel is pretty narrow. It's going to be about eight inches wide. We're going to need a bottle of glue. We're going to need a wooden mallet and a piece of small piece of scrap wood. We're going to need this bucket with a sponge and a little bit of water in the bucket. And then we'll have everything we need. Now, if you are not using this table and you're just using one of the regular work surfaces, you need to make sure you put newspaper down underneath your table so that you don't get glue on the work table. We're going to go ahead and set up our clamps. And they just drop right in these slots. And you want to make sure that the space between these two bars slips down right over this piece here. So when I put this clamp down on the table, you can see that these two pieces right here sandwich our piece of wood. And then you want to open them or close them depending on where they're at so that they are, they're not clamping down on this, but they are kind of snug. So there's a little, just a little bit of play through there. Okay, so that's, that's where we want it. And then we're going to take these and slide those back so we got plenty of room for our boards to now lay down on this surface. So this is going to be our bottom of our top piece so they're going to lay nice and flat on there and we'll make sure that they stay flat. Alright, so I have my boards here and I want to look at first the end grain. Okay? Now the end grain is where the growth rings of the tree can be visible. So we can see those growth rings kind of going in an arch like this, like a sad face. And then on this one, it arches like this, like a smiley face. So we want to mark those. The reason why we're doing that is because we're going to alternate that grain pattern to prevent warping. If, we both, if they are both going the same direction, it's going to want to warp in that direction. We don't want that to happen. So we alternate one. And then we look at our surface grain and we see which surface we like best. So if we need to flip it over, flip it over. We want the good surface up top because that's the surface that's going to be seen on our box. Okay, 
So we are ready to go ahead and start with the All right, so we're going to take our first board and flip it up. Our line of glue on there. And there's no need to wipe your finger on it. You can use this on the board and spread the glue this way. And I'm going to make my left side even right here. And then I'll cut off the excess on this side. Now, this works really easy for this panel because it, it's spaced very nice for us on these clamps. We don't want more than an inch on the outside of these clamps. If this panel was a little bit longer, we would add a third clamp right here in the middle. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start tightening my clamp on the left because this is my good side. I'll tighten up the clamp on the right and I should start to see a little glue squeeze out on my seam. That's what we're looking for, that's what we want. We want a good amount of pressure, but not too much. Too much pressure will make all of that glue squeeze out, and we won't be able to uh, have any glue in there, so we're gonna take the clamps off. It just falls apart. Okay, that's called starving the joint. All right, so now I'm gonna use my wooden mallet and my piece of scrap. I'm gonna lift this up so we can see here. What usually happens is our board comes away from the clamp. So I got about a quarter inch gap there, and it's nice and flat down here, so this side's good, but I'm going to use that mallet to knock this down flat. So I'm going to put this piece of scrap wood exactly in the location where it's raised up. So I'm going to take it here, and I want one good solid hit. I don't want to repeatedly hit this thing. If it's not going to move with one good solid hit, it's probably not going to move. And then I'm going to give this a little bit of a turn and I'm kind of feeling to see how tight this is. If, it, if it's still pretty snug, I don't want to over tighten. Okay, so now I'm going to go over here because I'm raised up. Okay, that looks pretty good. It's nice and tight on the bottom. And I'm nice and tight on my clamps. So I have a little bit of excess glue here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my sponge and I'm gonna wring this out as much as I can because I don't want too much water. I just want this to be damp. Water and wood don't mix together really well. It makes it swell and makes bad things happen. So I'm gonna scrub this excess glue off but here on the ends. And then I'm gonna flip this over and because of gravity, all of our glue squeezes out on the bottom. Just by kind of rotating the sponge and getting a clean section of sponge will allow you to remove all or almost all of that glue. Now, my panel is glued up, so what I need to do is I need to leave my clamps on here for at least 30 to 45 minutes, and that'll give that glue plenty of time to set up and we can start working it again. Now, I want to make sure that my name is on here, and I want to make sure that it's nice and big and easy for anybody to see so that when they go to take off my clamps, because they needed these clamps, they know whose it is. I can go up and easily find it uh, when I need to, when I come back to work on it. Okay, so now I got a little bit of cleanup to do. I'm gonna set my panel on the handles like this, leaning up against the wall like you see here, okay? This is gonna give it the most stable way to store. If we store it upside down like this, these legs aren't very stable and now it's top heavy and it's gonna wanna fall over and it can hurt somebody. So we're gonna stand it up like this in the front of the room. All right, I need to bring out my sponge so I have glue in there, and if that glue dries on this sponge, it will be waterproof and it will ruin our sponge. So we're just gonna wring out the sponge a few times, and then we can take it back over to the sink and dump it out. But we have a little bit of cleanup on our glue bottle. If you notice when I took this cap off to start, it was kinda stuck. 
That's because there's glue all over the tip of that nozzle. So we're gonna wipe that off and make sure that it doesn't happen to the next person that comes up to use the glue bottle. And put your cap back on. Okay, so now it won't stick the next time somebody goes to use it.